the God of Ab Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. It was he who, as the angel of the covenant, had revealed himself to the fathers in ages past. And Moses hid his face when he was afraid to look upon God, which he should have been, right? Humility and reverence should characterize the deportment of all who come into the presence of God. What is that? Humility and reverence. When we come into the presence of God, we should all come with humility and reverence, right? Amen. Not just coming in in any kind of type of way that we want to. Right. In the name of Jesus, we may come before him with confidence, but we must not approach him with the boldness of presumption as though he were on a level with ourselves. God ain't on the same level with us. So when we approach him, you need to approach him with reverence. And he's God. He's our creator. So we got to approach God with reverence. Amen? Amen. There are those who address the great and all-powerful Holy God who draw the light unapproachable as they would address an equal or even an inferior. There are those who conduct themselves in his house as they would not presume to do in the audience chamber of an earthly room. There are those who, you know, come to the church of God, we just come in any type of way and do anything we want to do and talk to you in that way. But you go to the courthouse, you're not doing that, right? Amen. They got some rules and regulations up there. You're not wearing no shorts. Exactly. You're not uh, coming there with your cell phone on. You're not coming there talking. You're not doing anything. You don't come to you don't come to that court with some reverence, right? right? If not, that bill is gonna say, uh, you need to be excused or just gonna say, lock them up. Right. Amen. So when we come to the house of, of the Lord, we need to come to the same way we come to the Man. courthouse, right? We should be even more, because we coming to the real judge, right? Yeah. right? We coming to a judge who's going to give you life or death. Right. So when we come to the house of God, let's come to the house of God with reverence, right? Amen? These should remember that they are in his sight with seraphim adored, before whom angels veil their faces. So we're in the sight of angels. You know what the angels are God, you know what they do? They kneel before the Lord, right? Yes. That's why when I have prayer, I like to kneel before God. Amen. Amen. That the angels do it. They said we made a little lower than the angels. Right. So we think we can't do it. We made a little lower than the angels. But it says the angels do it all day long. Right. Why? Because they're thankful. Yeah. But we, we yeah. so unthankful, you know, for all types of people. That ain't my message today, though. But, uh, but we should just be reverence unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It says uh, God is greatly to be reverenced. All who truly really realize his presence will bow and look to before him. And like Jacob beholding the vision of God, they will cry out, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Amen. God spoke to Moses from an unexpected source of buttery bush. When Moses saw it, when Moses saw it, he went to investigate. God may use us, God may use unexpected sources which we can one communicate to us too. Whether it be People, thoughts, or experiences, be willing to investigate and be open to God's surprises. Amen? You think Moses, when he saw that burning bush, that you saw a burning bush, most of just run away, right? But, and don't run around and that bush just burning, and then, no, we wouldn't run away from the burning bush, but somebody called the name of that burning bush, and we would be like, uh, time to go, right? <laughs> but God calls us from all types of things, so we got to be willing to investigate, as Moses did, as like he did that burning bush. Amen? And so and going back to the uh, Patriots and Prophets, it says, Amazed and terrified at the command, Moses drew back saying, Who am I that I should stand and go into Pharaoh, and I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? The reply was, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought from forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Moses thought of the difficulties to be encountered, of the blindest, ignorance, and unbelief of people, many of whom were almost destitute of the knowledge of God. Behold, he said, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? The answer was, I am that I am. Amen? Moses made excuses because he felt inadequate for the job when God asked him to go, right? God asked him to do it, but it was natural for him to feel that that way because he was an actor to go all by himself. But God wasn't asking Moses to work alone. He offered other resources to help, which God was which which was God himself, his brother and Aaron, and the ability to uh, to do miracles, which we can find in chapter four, so we're gonna go to chapter four, uh, and start up in chapter four. So when God asked Moses to go and, and do this for him, Moses was like, I can't, who am I? And, and, and then Moses came up with all kinds of types of excuses. So God said, well, you know what? And so uh, Moses wants some miracles. So God said, let me show you some miracles and show you 
that I am with you. Since you need uh, some miracles to, to show that I'm with you and other people can see. You know, like when God asks you to do, to do stuff, you know, we, everyone always thinks they need the miracles in order to just God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Why do we need miracles? He wakes you up every morning, right? Is that miracle or not? Or do you wake your own stuff up? You know, some people think they work their own stuff up. They think they set the alarm, so they woke their own stuff up, right? No, uh -huh. he gives you breath, right? Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Man, there's so many types of miracles, but we want a personal miracle in our own lives. When the sun shines every day, that's not, that's not enough miracle for you. When the sea stops from uh, 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 goes to its boundaries and stop, that's not miracle enough for you. We got all types of miracles, just in nature, we got miracles, amen? amen. So we got, all we got to do is look at nature. Out in this place, out in Amarillo, when you got the hail coming down, <laughs> If the thunderstorms as it is uh, around here, you know, and, and we still here, the tornadoes come and they pass away, right? Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. But Moses, Moses needed something else. He said, I can't go. I can't. No, I can't. He made all the excuses. So listen to these miracles then. Let, let's go to uh, Esther chapter 4 and let's see these miracles right here that God gave him. That he had to give him, he had to give him just for him to go do something. I hope we not like this. But we got to have big miracles like this. Starting up with verse 1 in Moses chapter in, in, uh, Esther chapter 4. And then, then Moses actually said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. And verse 2 says, So the Lord said to him, What is it that in your hand? He said, It's a rock. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and became a serpent, and Moses slid from him. I will have too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it back by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, yes, and it became a rod in his hand again. Now, is that a miracle? Amen. Now, that's one miracle, but Moses still wasn't satisfied with one miracle. That's a big, that's a big miracle. I'm not fixing to, well, I'm not fixing to go by no state anyway to begin with. And they cast it down to the note, hit the rod, and then he threw it down and became a stake. Once it came a stake, I would have been done. You know, most of it, I think, was well, anyway, right? But he picked it back up and it became a rod again. Now Moses, he still, Moses still said, no, Lord, I can't do no work for you. Who am I? No, nah, no, nah, that's not enough. And so the Lord said, well, come on, let me give you some more. Verse 5. Now David, no, verse 6. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like some. Verse 7, he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again, and drew it out of his bosom, behold, it would restore like his other flesh. Most of us would freak out, I'd be here with God crazy. Put it in there, and they come out leprous. Come on. You'd be like, oh, let me get to the doctor real quick. Let's see what's going on. The Lord said, no, nah, let me show you who I am. Put it back in there. Put it back in there, bring it back out. What happened? It's restored, it's new again. You think that would be enough for Moses? Still not enough for Moses. Moses like, no, nah, I still need more. Verse 8. Then it will be if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe you with those two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river, pour it on dry land, the water which you take from the river will become what? Blood on the dry land. Man, another miracle, right? These big miracles, right? You had any uh, big girls like this happen in your life? Like that? So, so we should be able to do what the Lord tells us to do then, right? Amen. Amen. Verse 10, it says, as Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech, and I am slow of tongue. Lord, I can't go before the people. I can't talk. I'm slow. I may study. I may do this. I may do all that. And you know, I was like that before, too, because I wouldn't. I, I never spoke, and I thought I'd never be able to know. Nobody's full of it doing what I'm doing today. So I was a Moses too. Who am I? I'm slow in speech. I need some help. I can't do all that. But the Lord got answers for all that. Yeah. Verse 11 says, So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the sin, or the blind? Have I not the Lord? Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you should say. The Lord said, all right, I made you. <laughs> I made your mouth. If I'm asking you, I'm going to give you what to say. Yeah. Uh, you're not deaf, are you? <laughs> You know, I can give you exactly what to say. And, and so, uh, verse 13 said, but he said, Oh, my Lord, please, please sin by the hand of whoever else you may sin. And so, verse 14, 
So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. So now the Lord getting angry, right? He said, look, I'm giving you all these miracles. I'm showing you. The people are going to accept you. And, and you're getting on my nerves, basically, what you're doing. And so some of us think that the Lord don't get mad. The Lord don't get mad at us. Yeah, he does. When you don't do his work and be obedient to you, yeah, he's mad at you. Why is he mad at you? Because you're not going to be saved. He's trying to save everyone. So, yes, he, he, he does get mad. And so he's getting mad at Moses because Moses is making too many excuses, like we do. Amen? It says, so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. He said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Verse 15 says, now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand, which, with which you shall do the signs. So the Lord gave him plenty of help, right? He gave his brother to him, Aaron. That rod still was going to do miracles right. It was going to open up the Red Sea, correct? So the Lord blessed him. He gave him all the miracles and said, hey, you got to believe me. You know, I, I'm not just talking to you. Just believe what I am uh, telling you. Amen? So we should not hide behind our inadequacies as Moses did, but look beyond ourselves to the great resources of Belgium. Yeah. Then we can allow God to use our unique contributions. Amen? Yeah. So let's not do like Moses, right? Let's look to God, who has all the resources. He gave him all the miracles. He gave him everything he needed to do. We need to do the same thing. Amen? Yeah. So when God asks you to do something like he asked Moses, don't respond by saying, who am I? All right. Amen? All right. When he asks you to become an elder, don't say what? Who am I? When he asks you to become a deaconess, don't say what? Come on, be deep and Now God must be saying, who am I, right? When you ask him to teach Sabbath school, don't say what? Who am I? Right? When you ask him to sing in the choir, don't say, that's for zero, because he asked me to sing in the choir. I'm glad he's not here today, because he'll get me on me that, right? Uh, when he asks you to partic participate in Sabbath school, don't say what? Or when he asks you just to show up on time, don't say what? Oh, amen, amen. That's for everybody, amen? <laughs> when, he, uh, when he asks you to lead out a prayer meeting, don't say what? <laughs> when he asks you uh, to visit missing members, don't say what? <laughs> when he asks you to witness to your neighbors and be nice to them, uh, which is, which is, by the way, is everyone you come, co come in contact with, don't say what? <laughs> when he asks you to visit those in prison, feed the poor, don't say what? <laughs> when he asks you to be a better person on a job that is a Christian, uh, don't say what? <laughs> When he asks you to be a Christian on the public and not laying down your religion for a second, you know what I mean, using that foul language. Because people say, I'm just going to lay down all religion for a second, then I'll pick it back up. Don't say what? Yeah. All right. Okay, I believe you got the point. Amen? Although that was mainly for the adults, I got some for the youth also. Amen? So, uh, 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 now I haven't, I haven't forgotten the youth. When he asks you to get up, when he asks you to get up, uh, Excuse me. When he asks you to get up on time and be ready for school, don't say what? This one is on you now. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> when he asks you to be witness to your friends, don't say what? And don't do drugs, don't say what? When he asks you to not have premarital sex, don't say what? When you ask you to participate in church, don't say what? When you ask you to be obedient to your parents, don't say? And, and who am I of the most important? When he asks you to become somebody in this society, first for the Lord and then for society, don't say what? You, you are able to become great leaders just like Moses said, did, but you can't say who am I? You are able to become lawyers, doctors, police chiefs, fire captains, senators, presidents of the United States, not reality stars, not sport figures, drug dealers. Do something for yourself and God will help you just like he helped Moses become a great leader of this nation. Amen. Amen. Now you see, uh, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't use uh, all the great things that people would become. You see, I use big things for all young people to become, right? Because God is big, right? Amen. God took Moses and used big things for him, so we don't have to. Even though we need people in all professions, but young people, you can be the most you can be. I use big things. President of the United States, uh, senators. Uh, a fire captains, all these big things, you could be big in this, in this life, right? Only if you say that you let God use you. So don't say who am I and don't do it, amen? 
And that goes for all of us. We all got to not say, who am I? Because that's what Moses did. He said, who am I? Lord, I can't do it. I can't do it. He, you know, he said, he made a thousand and one excuses, but God gave him a miracle after miracle after miracle. And we have to do the same thing. We can be great in this world, amen? And most of all, God has called us to be a witness, amen? He called us to be a witness to this dying world. He didn't just call us down here just to live our life and to do what we want to do, even though most of us think that's what we've been called for, right? You know, but if that's what you think you've been called for, and our life expectancy is what, 70 years old? If you're blessed at 70 years old, amen? Right? And he may add two more on too, right? And I know when you're young, you don't say that, you know, God, that's way far down the line, you should love the Lord, right? But when you get a little older, and, you know, you reach 70, and you get, you know, I'm 56, and almost, you know, so at 70, I got about 14 more years, according to the Lord, right? Uh, so, you know, it gets real, amen? amen? So God has called us to a marvelous life, to, to be a Christian. Be a Christian, you know what? It's such a big false thing that you can't be a Christian while you're young, you know? I'll wait till I get old and uh, give my life to the Lord. You know what? You may not get old. They may cast it all something. They cast it this small to that big, right? So you may not get old. So what you want to be saying, you got to be, uh, be obedient to the Lord today. You don't have to go out there and do all the things that the world do. You know what? I didn't. My testimony is, you know, because we had lots of testimonies and they're good. I have nothing against them, but, you know, it was... You know, I did drugs, or I, I was out in the world, I did this and that. But you know what? We need some testimonies to tell our young people, I didn't do none of that. Amen. I stayed with the Lord amen. all my time, all my youth, amen? amen? We need to give them testimonies too. Amen. You know, we need to let our youth our know that you can still follow the Lord, and still, I still had friends, I still kicked it with them, but you know what? I was a witness to them because you know what? When they got ready to do something, they said, no, John, he don't do that. You know, so you can still be a witness. I'm not telling you not to hang with them and just to be a hermit and just get away. No, you can still be a witness. You can still hang with them, but God wants you to be obedient with Him. You know what? This world is dying pretty fast. You know what? We ain't got much. I know we keep hearing the end is there. It's coming, right? It is. You know why the end is near? Because when you when you die, your time is done. That's why the end is there. When you die, when you die, it's over with for you. Your election, you're going to be saved or you're going to be lost. Amen? So we have to live for today. We have to live now. We can live during, we can live young, we can live old. So it's never too late, though. As long as we have breath in our life, God has given us a chance. Amen? Amen. So, you know, that is my message for today. I told you I'm not going to be wrong. My messages are never long. <laughs> you know, I just like to get to the point. And the point is today, who am I? And that's for everyone, to take a self-examination and say, who am I? Has the Lord called you? What has he called you to do? So when he asks you to do stuff in the church, don't say, who am I? You know, when he asks you to get up this morning and be the Sabbath school, at, what time Sabbath school start? 9.15? 9.30? I don't know about people don't want to hear this, but you know. I don't have to give it anyway. Don't say lay in that bed and say, who am I? I know you get up and go to work. Uh, way earlier than that during the week. Right? I know when I work, I'm retired now, but I know when I work, I was up at 3.30 every morning. You know? I can make it to church, and I can't make it to church at 9 15. Come on. You're not coming to see me, though. You're coming to see the Lord. So you should, you know, it says the, the later you come to church, the more the angels give out blessings. So the day that you come, you don't receive no blessings. Mm -hmm. Don't you want all the blessings? Amen. Amen. So you know, we should try to be on time for church. We should try to make every meeting, right? Tuesday night, Wednesday night, why? Because we learn more about God, right? We become closer to God, right? And these are things that we want to do. These are things that we need to do and have to do in order to make it to the kingdom of God. If you don't do them down here, you ain't gonna be happy in heaven. If you just do your own thing down here, and you just come to church because you have to come to church or whatever. Like you just think that I'm just going to keep the Sabbath by just coming to church. But you ain't making it to heaven anyway. Because you know why? You wouldn't be happy in heaven. Because this is what we're going to be doing in heaven. God said we're going to meet every Sabbath. We'll get to, you know, that says when we get to heaven, from one new moon to another, yeah. we're going to get it together. But guess we're going to be here in that summer every Sabbath. God himself. Amen. Amen. Then you should not want to miss out on heaven. If you like this world, then live it right now and more power to you. 
Don't even come back to church no more. Go out there and live your life. Live it to the fullest. I'm telling you, live it to the fullest. You should, because this is going to be your heaven on earth. Don't need a half step. You don't want a half step and still miss out. Amen. Enjoy your life fully right now. I don't want a half step if, you know, and then miss out on heaven. Heaven is glory. It says it's going to have streets of gold. Anybody ever walk on streets of gold? Huh? Pearly gates, right? Anybody, anybody, who lives in the mansion right now? Who ever been to a mansion? You know, you're going to have a mansion. Oh, we can't even, man, we can't even, uh, we just can't even imagine none of them things because of this door like the sin that has been put up on this earth, right? So we just can't even imagine, but we need to imagine these things so we, so that you will want to go to heaven, amen? So at this time, you know, I just my, my appeal is just for everyone to look at themselves and say, who am I when it comes to the Lord, amen? amen. If we can just say, who am I and look to the Lord, we'll be all right, right? Amen. The Lord forgives, right? If we sin, ask for forgiveness. That's what it's there for. You know, and then change your ways. Yeah. Turn around. That's what he asks us to do. Change your ways. Turn around and seek him. Amen? Amen. At this time, we'll, uh, I just want to pray this uh, out at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for your precious Holy Sabbath. Thank you. Dear Lord, I thank you just for using me as I'm not worthy. Dear Heavenly Father, we need to get up here. But dear Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. And Lord, may we just say, not say, who am I? But may we say, Yes, Lord, to your will. Continue to bless us and keep us throughout your own Sabbath day. And most of all, then, Lord, I ask that you to say each and every question in the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.